Hey, um, my name is Dermot Maloney. Uh, I am the head of engineering architecture for security services here in JP Morgan. And um, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, test driven development for infrastructure for code. And specifically, how to bring a uh, testing element back to your code base. Now, Sunday, when I went to write this talk uh, last Sunday, I decided, a bit like Rob, to put a definition up on the screen. So I Googled to see what the official word was for phobia for change. And I was going to get up here. I was going to say it, and then I saw the word. And, and I was like, am I really going to try to attempt to say this word? So methesthesophobia. I don't think I got that right. But it's the, the rare, the persistent, abnormal, unwarranted fear of change. And I, I love the way that they say it's rare, because anybody who's worked in software development and deploys code for a living doesn't feel that's a rare feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a bit of a mouthful, but I think it, it kind of sums up a lot of what we feel sometimes in, in, in this industry, this fear of change, and especially in the infrastructure space, because as things have grown up, especially with like the big cloud providers, we have big, big scripts out there. So we have big, big cloud formation scripts with thousands of lines of code. And there's a fear that's kind of coming into our industry where people are frightened to change. And we have big monolithic scripts, as I said, and you know, we're frightened of changing and, and there's, there's a problem. And we've kind of seen this before. We've seen this before in our core application service, right? Our applications that they grew up as monolithic applications and then it became really difficult to scale, really difficult to change, really difficult to work with. So what we did, what we did, what did we do? We took them and we, we broke them down into smaller chunks. We call them microservices and we got them to, to work that way. So a lot of what tonight's talk is about is how do you bring back confidence in your development process in infrastructure as code by using testing and breaking everything down into smaller monoliths. And I think the other thing that I, I thought I'd bring up here is, is a gift that's often used, I think, to describe our ability to release software. You know, this is Indiana Jones in Raiders Lost Ark in 1981. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to replace the golden statue with the bag of sand and hope it all works. And so I think this is most of my Friday nights when we're releasing code. I'm hoping it, it works, right? And I don't think it worked out too well because in a few minutes later, the boulder starts to follow him down through the cave. OK, so before we talk about testing, let's talk about infrastructure as code and what do I mean? So I think a lot of people here probably know this really, really well, but I think it's a mixed crowd and people have like, you know, some people know it, some people don't. So let me talk about what infrastructure code is. And I think just before Rob and Will, they described this stuff as well. It, it started, I, I think, basically with the evolution of cloud with the likes of Amazon and Azure uh, and Google, they all do an API first driven approach. So that means you can, you can take your storage, your machines, your, your, your load balancers, your network attached to devices, and you can actually create them um, via code by going to their APIs and endpoints. And so now suddenly you have the ability to actually log on, go to the endpoint, create, create the, the, the machine or service that you want. And then what slowly grew up around, around those um, APIs is this concept of infrastructure as code. So you start to model your infrastructure, your environment as, as a code, you start to put it into source control, you start to put it into Git, and suddenly you can treat it just the way that we treat our Java applications or JavaScript applications, et cetera. So, um, you know, we're at the HashiCorp meetup. So there's a number of tools that do this, but given where we are tonight and everybody likes HashiCorp, um, I thought it would be good to do the demos through um, a tool called Ter Terraform. And as you can see, again, with HCL, that we saw earlier, you have a Terraform file that defines your resources. And in this case, it's going to all scaling group with Amazon and an ELB. And inside there, you, you literally give configuration, you give some tags, you give some, some instant counts and stuff like that. And then what you do, you can just run Terraform um, plan. It looks at your environment. It works out what it needs to do to change to the state. And then it starts calling those APIs behind the scenes. And it, it kind of works like magic. And, and it, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool to use. So once you take that code, you run Terraform, you get your, your resources uh, created. Um, OK, so, so here, here's, here's a slight, a slight um, example of how it works. And this, I think, we've, we've seen this already a few times already tonight. It's Terraform flat plan. It looks good. You eyeball the changes. You know, you're like, oh, yep, yep, that makes sense. And then you go Terraform apply. And I think anybody who's used Terraform apply in production, you know, on a Friday night, suddenly it all, it all goes, goes away. And what I want to talk about a lot is, is there an easier way to, to do this? So that's really awesome, but is there a way to make our lives even easier? Is there a way to bring confidence back into our, um, into our intervals? So um, I think this is a testing pyramid that pretty much everybody would have seen, right? And um, as you can see, Sunday, 
I um, I didn't spare any expense with this with this one, right? This is a, a lot of effort in um, in PowerPoint went into this, but it kind of it kind of draws a uh, draws a good narrative, right? Because at the bottom you have static tests, um, linting, compliance tests, then you have unit tests, integration tests, and then end -end tests. So very similar to what we do in our application space. Um, so let's start with what I mean by lint, linting and, and, and static analysis. So the, the first simplest one to work with is Terraform Validate. It's built into the command line tool. You can go in and you can actually, uh, it syntactically checks to make sure that your code, your template is, is right, and it's early warning detection. Now, what it doesn't do, it doesn't actually go out to Amazon or Azure, it doesn't actually run up any build in any cloud environment. It, it just checks the syntax. And I think we see this a lot in, um, in, in lots of different languages, right? Now, I think my demo is next, but I sat there for most of the previous two talks thinking, oh, I've can recorded my demo and everybody else hasn't. And then I saw Will and I was like, oh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> so earlier today, this was embedded in this PowerPoint, uh, but hopefully through the magic of the guys up there, this should work next. Oh, I didn't. Where is it? Okay, cool. So again, like Will, I'm gonna talk through, you know, I've, I made some mistakes here. Like for example, I ran Terraform validate. I've got invalid characters. I go to line 42. I see that there's a, a syntax change between versions of, um, I heard some laughter. I think I'm not the only one that's made this mistake. I go in, I run clear Terraform validate. And that was a lot quicker when I was practicing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so then, you know, so now, now I've got a, a, a working version of the, of the code. Now, that, that, that's like the, the basic one. I think everybody, it was on the previous screen, I think everybody does a LinkedIn test. Now, the next one that's pretty interesting is Terraform compliance. So this is where you can actually do some basic security tests and actually start to put in your own rules. So Terraform compliance is an open source tool. Um, it's available on the net. It's a Python, you, you know, pip install it. And it, it's very much in the style of behavior-driven development, so stuff so like Cucumber, where you literally give it a, a scenario, which is like this feature is enforcing naming standard of divine resources. The scenario is name standard on all available, uh, naming standard on available resources. And then you can just say, given I have a resource name, when it contains this key, then ensure that it matches this regex. So, you know, especially as you're building big enterprise systems, naming conventions, security conventions is really, really important because Again, as you scale out, it gets really, really complicated. It starts off simple, and then it's like a nightmare to manage. Okay, so let's see if my second demo works. Ah, cool. So here, you, you, inside the Terraform file, you see really badly named um, uh, resource names. It's all over the place. Uh, and as that scales out, it becomes very difficult to uh, work with. And then what you do is make sure Terraform compliance is installed. You write a feature file like this, and then what you do is you get Terraform plan, you out, output it to the plan. So it's, it's available, I can see whatever, what was going on. And I take that plan, eventually, soon, run Terraform compliance, tell it where my, um, my uh, feature test files are and my plan file, and I've run it. And you'll see that I failed my naming convention test. So inside here, I'm looking for everything, demo, IAC, TDD, star, star, star. And here, here's me typing furiously and fixing all the names. And I'm gonna take a drink of water while I get that fixed. This is uh, what he's asking. Okay, so I, so I go in, fix everything. Everything's looking standard. I think this is the last one, yep. So I gotta run Terraform plan again because I need to see what's, what's changed versus my environment. Running. And finally, we run it again. And the tests. I missed the best part. That was a bit, that was a bit aggressive. All right, okay, so, so moving along, we are, we're gonna talk about unit testing. So now, unit testing is actually quite hard in, in this space. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do. And, and it's difficult to unit test something like this, right? Because you know, you're know you going out to Amazon, you're going to Azure, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna mock that, you're not gonna get much more out of that than a LinkedIn exam, right? So unit tests are more like integration tests. And earlier I spoke about the key is breaking down your infrastructure into units of work, right? So imagine you've got a massive infrastructure, lots of machines, lots of Lambda, lots of RDS, everything like that. The, the goal is actually to break it down into reusable components, modules in, in, in Terraform. 
And how it works is we deploy these units to an ephem ephemeral environment, assert that it works, then we destroy the environment, and then we know that it's working. You know, so there are a number of tools in the open source space, TerraTest, Kitchen, Terraform, Goss, there's a, there's a number of them out there. So they all do something very similar. They give you helper classes that allow you to um, call Terraform, do the plan, do the apply, and then assert that it, it works. Okay, so here's an example of one of my attempts to, uh, you know, so here, here I'm, I, I've just done um, Terraform plan, so I've seen everything that's gonna go to production. I'm doing a very, very quick eyeball. It looks, looks pretty good. So I do Terraform apply. It's gonna take a few seconds. I've tried to speed this up as much as I could. There you see it creating the auto scaling group. I think, uh, I think it was a will. You know, we're waiting around for DNS uh, returns a lot. I think that is a staple of infrastructure development, right? Okay, so there we go. We got the DNS name. My simple HTTP server should be up and running, and I should be able to connect to it and um, see that it works. Ah, it doesn't work. So something went, went wrong. So I think when we're talking about test-driven development, what I want to show here is how you do test-driven development. So we can, we can make that a lot simpler for, for folks um, doing, ter, uh, doing infrastructure development. So here's, here's TerraTest, and here's a sample TerraTest um, uh, unit test. And basically, it's an extension, or it's, it's using the Golang um, testing framework, and basically, it's just like helpers and some, some testing tools along the way, right? So on the, at the beginning with on, on, on line 15, you have us telling where the templates are. 20, we, we say, this is how you destroy the, the environment. We've deferred it. And then 23, 24, we're, we're applying the actual Terraform template. And then using, using Terraform. One second. Uh, <laughs> funny, Siri never responds to me when I want it. Uh, so then on the last line, this is our assertion, right? So we go to, we go to the endpoint, we assert that hello HashiTalks works, we give it a, a I think it's a, a five second um, time and we try 30 times. So you run this uh, as part of a simple, um, so there's the, there's the test. Here's me typing in what you just saw which is a lot better earlier when I saw it. Okay, and you just run go test. And it's trying, it's trying, it's trying. And at the end, fails, right? So this is, this is, this is the, probably the right way to do it, right? We, we, we know there's a problem. It was a pretty simple thing. I forgot to put an egress into the, into the template. Here am I putting it back in. And, and I think that's a, that's a really good methodology to, to think about. So, you know, as, as we do in our um, everyday software engineering lives, we write the test first, prove that it fails, and then actually, and here, here is it going again. And after another couple of seconds, all the sailing group is created, and I'm testing the endpoint and Let's see, hopefully I'll get the success message left on the screen. Okay, and there you go, the, the, the test passed. So that's an example of how you unit test um, a Terraform module. All right, so along the, the, the testing pyramid, you, you finally get to end-to-end -end testing. Now, end-to-end -end testing is pretty, pretty slight. The, the, there's a trade-off between when, you, when you're doing testing, right? So the, you have the, the simple stuff are the quick and fast stuff at the start, the linting, then you go to unit testing, integration testing, and then you go to um, into end testing. And each has a, has a, a, has a trade-off, right? Because there's a trade-off between how long it'll take to write, how long it takes to run, how useful it is, and then how flaky it is, right? So I think building a brand new end-to-end uh, -end test environment every single time you're gonna do changes is gonna be very expensive, both expensive in terms of actual execution time and actually getting it to run, but also in terms of maintaining it. You know, if they are, you know, if, if one component is very flaky and all that, you, you kind of do the math and it becomes extremely uh, flaky across the entire thing. So it can be very slow and painful 
And these environments become very difficult to maintain if you're creating them again and again and again every day. And suddenly, you know, it's, it's the balance between what's useful versus what's not useful. So the best practice right now in the industry, or, or at least the, 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 with the stuff that, that I've seen, is to stand up a persisting staging environment. So you have a, like, a production-like environment where you deploy changes from a single infrastructure module into the staging environment. So you, you take on something like the elastic load balance, you make a module there, and then you make your changes there, you, you, put into product, you put it into your staging environment, and then you run your assertions and make sure that it works there. And so that, that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty good way of, of actually scaling out these, these tests. Um, okay, so I think in terms of takeaways, this is quite a new area overall in, 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 in our industry. But the testing part of it, I think that's the part where I think we're still having some teething problems. It's, it's, it's okay, it's a bit laborious, you know, a lot of things are kind of like, it, it works, but it's not as good as, let's say, our Java development or JavaScript. The tools aren't as advanced. Um, it can be tricky, it can be problematic, and like I said, there is always that trade-off between the usefulness of the, the test versus the flakiness. And, and, you know, there was a bit of a, a sleight of hand almost with the unit tests. They're not pure unit tests, right? They're, they're testing integration testing, and, and the in integration tests are integration tests of integration testing. Um, but at the start of the talk, I, I spoke about, you know, the confidence, the fear of change. And every single time you make releases production, you want to increase your confidence that it's going to work because you don't want to be sitting on the back of a, a Terraform apply and, and lose your, your, your business or your application. And we know the more, the more you test, the more confidence you get. And the more confidence you get, the more releases you do. And the more release frequency you have, the better the product that you built. So a lot of this is around um, increasing your confidence. It's, like, like I said, it's not a, it's not as mature as the other spaces. It's difficult to see your coverage. It's difficult to, to write your test. But if you put that effort in and you put those into your pipelines, you can get a lot of return on there. And you can increase your feedback and decrease your cycle to, to, to market. So um, yeah, I think, yeah, we're done. <laughs>